Welcome to The Night Shift, BTVN's very own podcast series. I'm Erin Pryor, and today I'm going to be talking about conspiracy theories with two very special guests. We have Dr. Kramer and Mr. Goulden. So, first of all, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for having us. What he said. And to start our discussion of conspiracy theories, do you guys have any initial thoughts or any favorite conspiracies? I'm just glad to be here, and I think that um, I'm delighted to hear what Dr. Kramer has to say about this topic. I think Mr. Golden knows a lot more than he's willing to say right now. Well, I do have some favorites of my own that we're going to be discussing today. And first of all, this is one that made headlines somewhat recently. So there was a theory that the government was hiding aliens in Area 51, and then a bunch of people on the internet decided that they wanted to raid Area 51. So what do you guys think about this one? Well, uh, I think it'd be incredibly challenging to keep a, a, a secret like that, of that magnitude, actually secret given how bad we are, you know, hanging on to just regular old boring secrets, a really sensational secret that would involve a whole bunch of people, I think it's a, it's a tough sell. That said, the idea of not being alone in the universe is very comforting. You know, I'd love to meet an alien. See, I'm going to have to disagree with that because uh, I support the Raiders, not the football team, obviously. That's disgusting. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. Uh, the, the people who raided Area 51, I support that entirely. We need to know the truth. We need answers. Uh, the answers are out there. Someone knows. And uh, I think we need an explanation. What do you think, Aaron? I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I agree that it would be hard to keep that big of a secret. Um, I, I also think it's funny that s this started on the internet and everybody decided, you know, we're going to go raid this place on this specific day. Um, I d and d it didn't end up happening, though, so maybe people just... The raid didn't happen? Well, I, well, I think I, I heard that people just kind of chickened out, so... I find it interesting that you only heard about the raid on the internet, so maybe the whole, whole raid was just made up to begin with. Yeah. Maybe that's the real conspiracy theory here. Oh, yeah. I, I know that there was, I think, one guy I saw on the news somewhere that he, he went in. But I think he, well, I think people were going to get arrested, so they were scared. See, I, I think you have to make some sacrifices <laughs> when it comes to discovering the truth. Oh, yeah. I wonder, what do you guys think these aliens would look like if they were hiding aliens in here? Would they be reptiles, or what color would they be? You know, a lot of questions. Uh, tall, lean, prone to wearing jackets and ties, maybe interested in teaching English, maybe, I don't know, strident in their opinions about Area 51, that kind of alien. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, I think little, green, slimy, uh, stinky. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Um, what do you think, Aaron? I don't know. I just think there's a lot of conceptions about what aliens look like, but we don't really know what they would look like, and who knows? Maybe they're maybe they're just single-celled organisms. Maybe they're really big. Who knows? I think single-celled organisms taking over the planet Earth would be interesting. Oh, I, yeah. I would like to watch that. And maybe they could be really smart. Yeah. Like smarter than us. Pretty easy for that to happen, in my case. Well, the good news is that, is that they haven't really escaped. If they're there, they haven't escaped and come to visit us, which could be, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, I, I take solace in that idea, but I still want answers. I think, yeah, I think we all want answers. But the thing is, is this happened in 2019 and it was before COVID happened. So mm. I think COVID kind of took over everyone's minds and everyone forgot about. Maybe it was a distraction. Maybe this will revive the interest. Oh, yeah. This podcast. I hope so, because we need answers. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, I think now is a good time to move on to our next topic, which is that the moon landing was faked. So what do you guys think about this one? I'm going to have to disagree. 
uh, with what Dr. Kramer said. Um, I think that the, uh, this is hard because. Um, I haven't said anything yet, so that makes it difficult. I, yeah. I disagree. I'm just, I disagree uh, with what Dr. Kramer said, is about to say. Um, so I think that Neil Armstrong is uh, an amazing American and a patriot and that we should attempt to model our own behavior after the life of service that he gave to the country and um, filled hearts with hope um, and believing in the greatness of our nation. Well, I suppose I'm going to introduce a, a paradox to our conspiracy theory because I don't disagree with you, so you can, you can work that one out. My, uh, my response to the, the fake moon landing is, uh, again, the magnitude of the secret. How do you keep that secret? And uh, as I clearly remember being three days old when we first walked on the moon, we were in the midst of a pretty serious Cold War with the Soviet Union. I'd, I'd like to suggest that if we fake the moon landing, the Soviet Union might have said something. Hmm. You want proof that we landed That's on the moon? True. The fact that the Soviet Union said we did? That's pretty compelling. Aaron, what are your thoughts? I don't know. I, I, this one, I wasn't really alive for this conspiracy theory, or for the event that started the conspiracy theory, obviously. Are you sure? Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I, as far I, I, as I, I know. I don't seeing you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually, the other conspiracy theory about the moon is that the moon is made out of cheese. Yeah. I think that one's a little bit more interesting just because I feel like it's, it's, it's almost more plausible than the fake moon landing. That might be kind of controversial, but. It suggests some kind of galactic cow. Yeah. <laughs> some some uh, planetary sized bovine, mm. which I think is, you know, is uh, something to really seriously consider. What do you think, Mr. Golden? Uh, I, I'm just impressed that you happen to know the name of my high school rock band, Bovine. Planetary Bovine? Yeah. Opening for Primus. Indeed. Uh, I, I think the dark side of the moon, uh, I think it would be fascinating if the dark side of the moon were some sort of Brie or um, Munster, a harder, earthier cheese. Uh, but it can't be earthy because it's, it's the moon. I see what you did there. I stand corrected. That was beautiful. Well played. Nicely done. Dr. Kramer, what cheese would you like the moon to be if it were? This, this is vaguely reminiscent of Barbara Walters. If I could pick the moon <laughs> to be any cheese, I suppose I would go with a nice uh, camembert. Just because I like saying the word camembert. Mm. <laughs> camembert. <laughs> What's your favorite cheese? Um, I like, you know, good old cheddar, American cheese. Yeah, uh, probably just go with the basics. Kay. Though, I, I guess if it was more of a yellow cheese, that wouldn't make sense because the moon is more white. Mm. So maybe it would be Swiss cheese. Yeah, that's why I think that the dark side of the moon offers a lot of interesting possibilities because we can't really see it, so it could be a completely different color. Oh, that's true. That is true. Did you know, actually, that there was the one study done that a bunch of people think that um, that chocolate milk comes from brown cows? So maybe there's this... How now? There's, maybe there's like a, a big cow that is, makes milk of like a weird color, and that's why it's mm. moon cheese, you know? These are the types of conspiracy theories that I can get behind. Oh, um, yeah. Large brown cows. Yeah giving us chocolate milk. I wonder where these cows would be in the universe. Uh, well, you can't we, see we them. do live in the Milky Way, so it's not, not mm. that much of a stretch. That's true. I'm just connecting the dots here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you're here. Th this makes a lot of sense, actually. I mean, maybe the real conspiracy theory is that the moon isn't made of cheese, considering all the evidence that it is. It's a kind of a false flag sort of yeah. yeah. But to hide the real makeup of the, it's probably, you know, maybe like a low-grade yogurt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. 
Well, I think now would be a good time to move on to our next conspiracy theory, which is all of the theories around D.B. Cooper, the guy who hijacked the plane in 1971, and then he got a bunch of ransom money, and he jumped off with a parachute never to be found again. And there's a lot of theories about this one because his real identity is still unsolved today. So what do you guys think? Do you guys know the real D.B. Cooper or well, do you have I think, about who I he thought, is? I thought this was settled recently. Is D.B. Cooper's Loki, the, the trickster god of Asgard. I thought that was on TV. I thought, like, case closed, right? Right? Uh, I, I prefer to disagree with Dr. Kramer, but I think in this particular instance he is correct. Loki. I, I'm pretty sure I saw it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, uh, Disney+, Plus, all of the most reliable sources. Oh yeah, very, very reliable. Do you know much about this particular conspiracy theory? Um, well, I watched a documentary on it one time, and I just thought it was interesting. So just because there's so much around it, but I also think it's hard to separate what's real or what's the true facts of it and what's just people kind of making theories about it. So what were the things that stood out to you the most about the documentary? Hmm. Well, I think there's just a lot of um, people who the, the thing that stood out was that there were so many people who raised their hand and said, oh, I know the real guy. Um, and I, I think it just shows how people jump to conclusions. I think this that was pr actually very insightful. Um, it's, yeah, it's very interesting. Any personal knowledge about uh, D.B. Cooper other than Loki? No, no. I'm, I'm completely fine with it being a, a, a Norse god. Okay. I, that makes as much sense to me as, I mean, it, Occam's razor, right? In the absence of anything else, the simplest solution is a Norse god. I might be misquoting Occam's razor a little mm -hmm. bit. But no, I think you got it. I think that's right. Do you guys, by chance, know anyone who you think might look like the, the sketch of the guy? Mm. Do we have a sketch? Is there a sketch of D.B. Cooper? There is a sketch. Have you seen it? I have not. Oh, Can okay. you describe it for us? Um, well... It's, it's kind of hard. He just looks like an average guy. Beard? No beard, no beard. Glasses? Um, I think some may have them and some don't. Small, green, stinky. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe stinking of cheese. Oh my Whoa. goodness. It's like <laughs> that's, that's crazy. all of the conspiracy theories wrapped into one. Think about it, sheeple. <laughs> yeah, these, these people, um, they just, they aren't enlightened like we are about this topic. I'm just grateful to the Barstow School. Maybe, maybe when he landed, or whenever he landed from jumping off the plane, mm -hmm. maybe um, then that's when the government transferred him to Area 51 to hide him there. Is he still alive? In Area 51? Maybe. Maybe we should raid Area 51 I to find out. I think we should raid Area 51 to find it out. Yes. Okay. This is this podcast is not is not um, encouraging anyone to do anything illegal. Or maybe we are. Maybe we are. Might have to put in a call to uh, Dr. Gallagher and ask for a sub for a day or two. Who's coming with me? Oh yeah. I'll. I guess I'll. I'll, I'll come <laughs> with you. Thank you. I just needed one. Best of luck. Thank you. Dr. Kramer, I think I'm going to, I might miss um, your math class on Friday. I, I think I'm going to go, yeah. Ray, go uh, find the truth. Yeah. Ray, the military installation. Oh, yes. yeah. I, yeah I, I get those emails all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if we were to show up, though, and instead of uh, an aggressive posture, we offered warm hugs? That would, I mean. You think that could work, Dr. Kramer? I can uh, imagine. Right here, right now, I want you to say, how do you feel about warm hugs? I think it could be that a warm hug offered by our particular species could be interpreted by the alien as some insult to their ancestors. So we'd have to be careful with that. That's a good point. That's a good point. Hmm. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes all you need is just a hug. Maybe they... See? Maybe they just need a little bit of reassurance. Maybe they just feel very isolated in Area 51, like no one cares about them. They just, they just need some reassurance. It's got to feel lonely. Oh, yeah. In the middle of the, is it in the middle of the desert, I think? Sure. Yeah. 
a stranger in a strange land, truly. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder, because if the aliens are in the middle of the desert in Area 51, they've never really seen the, you know, the ocean or whatever. They've never gotten to experience the nice parts of life on Earth. A warm breeze in their face. Yeah. A nice cheese in their mouth. Oh, yeah. That originates from the moon, possibly? Mm, that the shipping fees are prohibitive. Oh, right, Unless right. they bought them, with, you know, they could, they could stop by, perhaps, carve off a... A lunar sample. That maybe would they've cost got a direct a lot. connection to the bovine major. Oh, perhaps, yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe they come from the same um, kind of region of the galaxy. Pretty sure Amazon can ha handle it. Oh, Amazon, yeah. They, they still do, um, I think, one day delivery for yeah. Moonjis. Yeah, there you go. As long as you have Prime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime can do anything. Amen. All right. Well, I know this next conspiracy theory is a bit less serious, um, if I can say that. If, I, I'm if, so sorry. The other ones were serious? Well, this one, I don't know. Uh, this one, I, I don't want to say it's not serious, because it is, if, the, if people are really hiding this from us. But a lot of people in my generation joke about the birds aren't real one. So have you guys ever seen a real bird before? Or is it just kind of something you've you think you've seen because that's what people have told you. Uh, I hate to respond to a question with a question, but can you describe a bird? Hmm. Well, Just so we're on the same page. Well, it has wings. Okay. Um, I don't know that it has to fly because penguins are considered birds, but they can't fly. Okay. Um, wings that might or might not allow the being to remain aloft. Right, right. Okay. Um, I think maybe they have a beak usually. Okay. Um, the ones, the birds that are usually described in the birds aren't real conspiracy are usually the kind of smaller ones. Um, I, I guess, I guess what I'm realizing is that it's hard to describe a bird when you've just been told what a bird is and not, even, maybe you haven't, I haven't seen it. Okay, thank you for those clarifying points. Um, I, I'm really wondering. I'm I'm shaken up a little bit. I think that I've seen a bird, mm -hmm. but I stand on shaky ground. I'm I'm not positive. Dr. Kramer. This is so absurd, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> the idea that birds aren't real, I think my, I think my brain has just quit. Um, when I was a child, I did have a bit of skepticism about whether Big Bird on Sesame Street was actually real. Mm. I don't know exactly what tipped me off, but I thought there was something maybe not quite right about that particular bird. But other birds, yeah, I'm down with. Being at the Barstow School, I've had enough close encounters with our local geese that uh, that gives me a real dose of reality. Aaron, are geese birds? I I would say yeah. Wings. Wings. Beaks, wings. Not so small. Yeah, that's true. But they seem to fit all you know, check all the boxes. I I'm very sure. Are birds characterized by emitting a profuse amount of excrement? Because if so. <laughs> Here on the Barstow campus, we have a lot of evidence. Yeah, and I, I mean so. a lot of evidence. I'd That's like to true. apologize on Mr. Gould's behalf for the off-color use of the word profuse. Well, maybe, maybe the um, who knows? Maybe, maybe we're not really. Maybe they're just holograms, you know. Okay, I. I when Dr. Kramer was talking about his own childhood and uh, Big Bird, it, it stoked something in my memory, which was I had a parakeet as a pet when I was a child. Uh -huh. His name was Woody, uh, and I purchased him from a grocery store for $5, and he lived to be about two months old uh, in my care. Woody was real. Oh. Woody was a bird. That, yeah, he sounds real. Yeah. He's a blue parakeet. And 
uh, squawked at all hours of the day and night and drove everyone in my house crazy. That sounds And then cool. my cat attacked it. Oh, Didn't no. kill it, but attacked. Birds are real. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Dr. Kramer, do you, would you agree that birds, birds are real, final conclusion? Yes, I am 100% behind the reality of birds. All right, well, this is our last theory, and every upper schooler at Barstow knows about this one because last time in upper school meeting, um, Dr. Gallagher said that he thinks Tupac is still alive. What do you guys think about this one? I, I just love that you came to us uh, as authorities on this question uh, when we're thinking about the life and career of Tupac Shakur. Um, Dr. Kramer and Mr. Goulden clearly are the ones to provide more information uh, on that important topic. So thank you for coming to us. Um, I would love for Tupac to still be alive, but we have many, many witnesses to his shooting. Uh, and as far as I know, he was cremated and had a funeral and they <laughs> scattered his ashes. So oh, that feels that. to me like strong evidence. That, yeah, that is pretty good evidence. Uh, to me, this seems to be parallel to something more relevant maybe to my childhood. So uh, right after the War of 1812, when I was a child, Elvis Presley passed away. And there was a similar sentiment amongst maybe a different demographic of society that Elvis was somewhere still alive. And that, that's faded a bit because Elvis at this point would be pretty, pretty well along in years and almost entirely encrusted in rhinestones, right? He naturally developed rhinestones as he got older. So he'd be, he basically he looked like a geode at this point. Uh, but you know, I, I, I hear the, the theories that Tupac is still alive and it just brings me echoes of the of you know a similar situation. In both situations, though, I think it's pretty clear. I, I agree with my esteemed colleague, Mr. Golden. Uh, it just seems implausible. Aaron, that, your thoughts? That's fair, yeah. I honestly didn't know that much about this one until Dr. Gallagher brought it up. Mm. But um, I, I have to say you have pretty good evidence. Um, and that is all the conspiracy theories we have time for today. So thank you again, Dr. Kramer and Mr. Goulden for joining. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast and we'll see you next time on The Night Shift.